Hello everyone. Welcome to edupediaworld.com and thanks for watching Edupedia World videos. This is Vikas Patil. This is the third session of the chapter The Geographic Grid System of Earth. In this session, we are going to explore about the relationship between the lines of latitude and heat zones on Earth. In this session, we are going to try and achieve the following objectives. Develop understanding about the concept of heat zones. Compare and contrast between the characteristics of these heat zones. Acquire knowledge about the location of the heat zones. Before we begin our exploration about the heat zones, let us look at some of the common misconceptions that exist regarding the heat zones. First, few people believe that places beyond Arctic and Antarctic circles experience 6 months of day and 6 months of complete darkness. Some believe that there is a significant change in climatic conditions as we cross the Tropic of Cancer or Tropic of Capricorn. Some people think that frigid zone is colder than tropical zone as it is farther away from sun. Well, all these are misconceptions. During this session, we will come to know what the real facts are. Let's begin. Light always travels in a straight line unless it is deflected by any object. The earth is spherical in shape. That means that the surface of the earth is not flat but curved. Due to the spherical shape of the earth, the angle at which the sun rays fall on different parts of the earth is different. The heat received by any place depends on the angle at which the sun rays fall. The heat received by any place decreases as we move from the equator towards the poles. Let us understand this by an experiment. When we flash a torchlight on a flat surface, we can observe that the area covered by the torchlight is less and all the light seems to be falling direct on the surface. On the other hand, if we flash the torchlight at different points on a ball or any other object which has curved surface or an inclined surface. The area covered by the torch light changes and so does the angle formed by the torch light. When the torch light falls directly, it is concentrated in small area and therefore is more intense. But when the torch light spreads over a larger area, it gets distributed in that area and thus becomes less intense. You can easily notice that in the picture. Similar variation of sun rays is experienced on Earth's surface. The sun rays are more or less direct on areas around the equator throughout the year. Due to this, there is more heat received by these places throughout the year. When we start moving towards the poles, the sun rays begin to spread over larger area and thus gets less intense. 
the heat received by the places keeps on decreasing as we move away from the equator one can easily notice the change in intensity of light during the course of a day during morning as the sun is near the horizon the sun rays are very slanting and thus the heat received is less as the sun goes higher in the sky the angle formed by the sun rays keeps on decreasing until it reaches its highest point the zenith we experience maximum heat given by the sun rays during noon as they are direct again as we approach evening the sun rays start becoming slanting therefore we start getting less intense heat if we carefully observe the thematic map of global distribution of heat we can see the evidence of the same the mean temperatures clearly show how the amount of heat received near the equator are the highest shown in dark red and the temperatures go on decreasing as we move towards the poles shown in blue color heat zones based on the heat received by places located at different latitudes we can divide the earth into different heat zones the amount of heat received by any place is the most important deciding factor about the climate experienced in that place and subsequently the type of vegetation found there human life gets affected by the type of climate and vegetation prevailing in different heat zones and thus we see drastic difference between the housing food clothes and lifestyle of people living in these heat zones let us learn about each of the heat zones in detail we find three different types of heat zones on earth the torrid zone also known as the tropical zone the temperate zone also known as the pleasant zone and finally the frigid zone let us look at each of these zones one by one torrid zone this zone lies between the tropic of cancer and the tropic of capricorn it covers the area between the tropic of cancer and the equator in the northern hemisphere and between the equator and the tropic of capricorn in the southern hemisphere this zone is the hottest zone of the earth as it receives relatively direct rays of sun throughout the year this zone is also known as the tropical zone since the tropic of cancer passes through the middle of india the southern part of india lies in the tropical zone and experience tropical climate places in the central part of africa central american countries northern part of south america southern islands of asia and northern parts of australia are located in the tropical zone and we can easily notice the similarity in the climate vegetation and lifestyle found in these places temperate zone this zone lies between the tropic of cancer and arctic circle in the northern hemisphere and between the tropic of capricorn and antarctic circle in the southern hemisphere this zone experiences moderate temperatures 
throughout the year. That is why it is rightly termed as temperate, which means moderate. The sun never shines overhead in this region. In fact, the sun rays become more and more slanting as we move towards the poles. Since these areas receive slanting rays from the sun, these areas receive much less heat than the torrid zone. Most of the countries of Europe, Central Asia and Central part of North America, Southern part of South America and Southern part of Australia lie in this zone. Frigid Zone This is the coldest of all zones. The region between Arctic Circle and the North Pole in the Northern Hemisphere and Antarctic Circle and the South Pole in the Southern Hemisphere come in this zone. The sun never shines above the horizon in these places. In fact, these places, especially those near the poles, do not see the sun for many months and then see the sun for the remaining part of the year. This gives rise to the occurrence of concept of midnight sun. These places get very slanting sun rays and therefore get the least amount of heat. These are the coldest regions on earth. The northern parts of North America, Europe and Asia, Greenland and Antarctica lie in this zone. Life is very difficult in this zone due to the low temperatures and scarcity of vegetation and food. This was all for this session. In the next session, we will focus on the lines of longitude. Don't forget to watch. Thank you.